GM, GM. Oh. Hey, there he there is. We there wow. we go. Welcome back from uh, from the Glamp, bro. How was it? Uh, it was really good. I probably should not have come back, man, after seeing what the market has done. But uh, <laughs> let's let's get to it, man. Let's talk about it. It's definitely interesting, nonetheless. I think uh, you know we've had a couple of weeks of probably extreme bearishness and then extreme bullishness and i think now we're back to um extreme bearishness kind of kind of a uh, symbolic to the overall chop that we've had for quite a while between 60 and 70 but now it seems like it's even more volatile um and we we broke support on the downside and here we are it's 56k our nukes got our uh our rune bags got nuked. Our ordinals are relatively down the same amount as BTC. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about it. What's going on with you, Ross? How was your uh, 4th of July? It was good, man. My brother was in town, so showed him around San Diego a little bit. Went surfing uh, yesterday for a little bit, so that was good. Definitely a full-touch grass weekend. It's kind of one of those moments where you step away for a moment to uh, check your phone in the corner, and then every time you check it, you're like, damn, why did I check? Now I'm in a bad mood. Uh, so definitely, I know that feeling. Yeah, dude, for sure. Um, I definitely think, you know, I kind of expected it to be one of two outcomes leading in. I know we ended last week's episode at 63K on Bitcoin, and we kind of talked about, you know, like, where are we going? Do we think we're going higher or lower? And we really just needed that confirmation candle from Bitcoin. Um, I definitely do think that, you know, Germany aligning with the Mt. Gox stuff uh, was just pretty bad timing overall for the market. But there sort of is some beauty in it being a, I wouldn't say force sell-off, but a planned sell-off, right? Like we knew this was coming. So there's definitely a chance some people front ran the news. Um, there's definitely instances we've seen in markets where there's a sell the news event. But when you have people claiming, you know, lost Bitcoin 10 plus years old, maybe not 10 plus years old, but uh, years and years and years old that has gone, you know, 20 X from where they stored it at, it makes sense that there's going to be selling. I don't really think there's much uh, way around that. And we knew that Germany was going to be selling. So we basically had billions of dollars of sell pressure hitting at once. Uh, people probably saw that and maybe front ran it a little bit and sold some in anticipation. Um, it seemed like that move back to 58K was, I think they said the German markets had closed. So stuff that was supposed to be sold was then taken off sell order books and then brought back on the next day. So we're still in the selling continuation, but you know we're still in a nice range. Like I'm not honestly as doom and gloom as some other participants. I think a lot of it was just mindset going into it. Uh, like we talked about last week, you know, there was always that, like I felt rugged. It's not like I went in and deployed all of my liquidity at once. I have actually been deploying a lot of liquidity uh, and starting to buy stuff in DCA because I do think these are some really nice discounts here. Um, but, you know, I, I think the whole thing is that it was a planned sell. So I'm not too worried. Do I think we can go lower from here? Of course, uh, there's still a lot of sell pressure there, but I think it's just a matter of withstanding and you know, treading water until we're done with the sell pressure. And hopefully from there, I think once we get that next leg higher and it shows that we're clearly bullish again, people are going to be rushing back in because these are some pretty low prices. Yeah, I mean, I think you nailed it. People definitely front ran the news about Germany selling and then the the Mt. Gox unlock and what the potential sell off there could be. Because if you really think about it, Germany sold about 1.2 or 1.3 billion, I think, thus far. And on a good week or two on ETF inflows, like we can easily digest that. So it shouldn't have really gone down, I want to say, as much as it did, but it did. Um, having said that, it, the, the price has pretty much rebounded pretty strongly, pretty sharply um, from the low of like 53. And I just think the market will just eventually digest this information and it's just a, a, a couple of headwinds that are will be out of the way and um it's going to kind of clear the way for a, a, a rally I, I think later on in the year um so i am i am looking forward to kind of getting past this moment um i think that's what it really was it was just a front running again it, it, it produces another opportunity here now um to get in on some things at at, at lower prices uh, get into your conviction buys 
Um, I think here, ultimately, I go back to what we used to say back in the NFT days, um, where you just buy what you like. I think right now, things are so cheap. Um, everything's probably a good buy. So just, just buy what you like. Absolutely. Um, you know, some people don't believe in good buys. They believe in see you laters. But this is for <laughs> sure an instance of a good buy. And couldn't help myself with that pun there, Waf. Uh, but, you know, going back into good buys, I did want to circle back to RSM, Rune State Machine. That was a big topic of last week's episode. We talked about it. It could have been the first programmable Rune. Had a crazy 2,100% increase in about a day. Uh, I think it reached a peak market cap of about $8 million and is now down to about $3 million. Would you put that in the good buy category? I really haven't been monitoring the progress. I'm not sure if you had a chance over the weekend to see what was going on with RSM, if the hype is still there, if the programmable rune thesis is intact. Uh, but that is one that I bought just purely off of the pullback. So I'm curious if you had any uh, update or any uh, thoughts today on RSM. I don't have any update or thoughts uniquely or necessarily on RSM, but I do feel that there's this utility rune narrative forming because now you have um, not only RSM, but you have Byzantine Empire or Emperor or something like that it came out too, which is supposed to be some predictive markets rune, rune, rune token. And... I think another one came out just maybe a day or two ago called Alpheus Agora, which is like a some kind of rune betting betting prediction markets or a protocol. So I just now I'm seeing like we're it seems like we're moving away from memes and trying to um, create some rune uh, utility uh, is what was what I'm seeing with the basis being um, the stablecoin NUSD. So. Bank, Bank of Nakamoto, NUSD, RSM, Byzantine, Altheus, Agora, kind of like my the five that I I, I lump into um, the Rune Utility narrative uh, um, that's forming right now. So I am kind of keeping my eye on that. I still think right now, ultimately, the narrative is 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 memes as like one category, but this utility category is um, seems like it's coming up quick, and and then. When you when you couple the fact with this fractal Bitcoin, which we which we touched base upon a little bit last week, we're hearing more and more about that that it's Unisat. I think Binance is backing it, so I think we're going to see a lot more of this rune narrative um, about utility coming out in the next uh, coming months. Yeah, well said, Waf. I mean, <clears throat> we definitely are, and you know, it's it's difficult to have a utility narrative when the narrative of the whole market or just sentiment is down. But some things are still holding decently well. Um, and, you know, I think there is sort of a tendency to panic. I do think a lot of the pullback has been um, extended to a decent bit. Like, I think I, I wouldn't say we're oversold because, again, I still firmly believe we could go lower here and we're still in another range. So beforehand, we found ourselves in that chop range of 60 to 70 K. I think now we're going to find ourselves in a chop range of about 53 to 60 K. I'm really looking to reclaim that 60 K to feel more bullish. Um, but again, you got to account for kind of stop losses. So like, I think above 64 K, I'd feel really good. Um, I think if we go below 50 K would not be feeling great, <clears throat> but right now we're still in that chop range. So I'm just kind of dollar cost averaging into positions that I feel comfortable consolidating. Uh, so if it's RSM or these other names that you threw out, I definitely do want to dig into them. Cause I think the ones that perform well right now are the ones that have the best thesis. Once runes come back, they should be poised to explode. Um, and I mean, it's really just the thesis of, are we going to get the all time high of Bitcoin again this year? Right. I, I, we've heard so many people throughout the cycle say Bitcoin to hundred K Bitcoin to hundred K. I've seen a lot of decent threads, uh, shout out to Fibonacci. I know he shared some trader sentiments in his most le recent field report. Uh, one of them was saying that, you know, he still thinks that hundred K Bitcoin is on the menu for this year. It's going to happen maybe September into December, so just year end kind of range. But if we do get that pump and Bitcoin goes to 100K, runes are gonna explode. There's just no way around it. So looking for the stuff that is holding right now, there's obviously gonna be some new rune participants later on. Um, we might see some happen right now, but when when sats are as low as like seven, I don't really think there's you know a whole lot going on in the rune world we need to glue our eyes to other than just what's holding up and has some support. I mean, you always got to buy the blood, I think, in my opinion. So when you're looking at like the top runes down 20%, 
30 percent 40 percent it makes the buys kind of easy um you know i've been looking at these rune charts like week to week and like we'll have a week of up 40 percent and then another week of down 40 percent and i think you could just kind of play these ranges um the bitcoin range you just you mentioned this now i i kind of agree with you it, it looks like it's like a 53 to 60k range over 64 would seem bullish if we could break that break that resistance um I think ultimately we just failed the the breaking the all-time high. We we knocked up on 70k like even maybe 2 weeks ago the last time we did and we just couldn't break through and I think it was probably it probably didn't make sense that we would um I guess you know eventually fall to the downside of the range because we couldn't break through. Um so this is gives us another accumulation uh period now I think. Um and and then maybe I would call it from Q beginning of Q4. Maybe we could start seeing a run like beginning in October. Kind of gives me like similar vibes to 2021. We had that massive point uh, run up with the Coinbase IPO into April, and Bitcoin hit like 69k. Kind of went back down all the way to 30 over the summer, and then by um, November we were back up to 69k. So I could I could see sort of like that kind of similar scenario play out i don't I don't know if we necessarily go down that low but if, if we stay in this range now till q4 like it would not be surprising to me um i'm also just dcaing every day not just bitcoin just other other coins that i like as well and not necessarily just bitcoin ecosystem uh coins either for that matter i think like salon is a great buy Ethereum is a great buy um so yeah it's just kind of like more of the same if you've been in the crypto world for a long time um what's happened in the last week or two is is really nothing new and it, it hasn't even been as bad as it's been in the past i think we're only down maybe 25 percent off of um the all-time high it's not really the you know a huge correction when you when you think about it um from the past I and mean, we've, we've had corrections of 40% in bull markets. And now we're talking a 25% correction. So I think everything's still all good. I think just gotta, um, you know, nibble at things that you like, and then ultimately just, you know, make sure you stay liquid so you could take uh, advantage of these opportunities. Yeah, well said, Laf. And I mean, I think that's just the biggest thing that I really want to echo, you know, and I've echoed it before, but it, it's really just this concept of nibbling in when you're DCAing. And I think when talking about DCAing, it's sometimes interpreted as like, try to catch the dip. And I mean, for sure, that's what's going to happen. But you're not trying to say this is the bottom, I'm going to catch all of it, right? It's sort of you're increasing your exposure up into a point where you say, I don't want to increase my exposure in this anymore. But you're still taking a bet. And then that's the thing, like you can increase your exposure, but nothing will like there's no guaranteed bets in trading right so even if you're continuing to dca and dca and dca like something could go to zero uh so with any of these trades or positions that you're taking on you really want to one find your conviction find stuff that you're comfortable buying as the price goes down if it's something you're not comfortable buying when the price goes down then maybe consider just closing for a loss before it gets too brutal um, I think one of the the things that I've seen a few times just in Twitter and, you know, sometimes in here, and it's no knock to MVHQ, where we definitely all make mistakes as traders. And I, I think these are just good opportunities to learn in markets like these. But sometimes when, you know, we get that bull bias and we see a 10% pullback on some of these coins, let's say a billion dollar cat, you know, my my target to start buying into that was 40 million after it falling from 55 million. So that's a 30% fallback. And then after it fell from 55 to 40, it proceeded to fall another 25%, right? So there's still a lot of blood that can happen even if you're buying on that dip. So if I had gone in and went 100% liquid, I would be like in pain right now, you know, deep pain <clears throat> because I'd be down 25% with no liquidity, all in on billion dollar cat. And I would be glued to that chart, just fearful of every movement against me. It briefly broke 30 million over the weekend. I would be not in a good shape, right? And I'd be like, do I sell? Do I buy more? I don't have money to buy more. So really just understanding that the price can always go lower. And then finding that conviction is just so crucial, I think, to success as a trader. Because if billion dollar cat here goes from 30 to 20 million, I want to still have enough size where I can dollar cost into it. So that if it then goes back to 30 million, ideally, I can be back to break even or in profit at that point. So I think really, this is an amazing time to practice risk management, sizing, 
and uh, in, in just slowing down your trading. So even though it's a little bit scary and choppy, I think there's a lot to learn from this this market environment. Yeah, I agree with you. Like I, I mean, like the, this last week or two, I've been making some plays, and I had some really nice setups that just got got nuked, you know, out of out of my control. Even my billion dollar cat trade, I was uh, laddering out um, in our, on our um, call last week on during our show. And I just didn't get all of it out in time. And, you know, we went, I bought in at about 68, 69 sats and we got as high as about 90. And I was, I was, I was trying to take profit and, it, you know, then I went away on Tuesday. So everything didn't get sold. And now we're back down to 55 sats. It just kind of is what it is. RSM, I think it was looking pretty good. It had a, had a really nice upward trajectory, but then the whole market got nuked. So, you know, you just, Sit on your bags and wait to see what else is next. I did. I did buy pups this week because I, I noticed the. So this is a new thing that I'm now I'm doing on on um, Magic Eden. I, I, I'm checking the 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 whole order book on Pups World Peace, and I just noticed how little is actually um, listed. So I I realized if somebody just sweeps. Like if you if you just take that that line on 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 the um the top right where where you purchase the uh the runes, if you just scale that thing all the way to the right, it probably it probably it's probably like ninety five thousand dollars worth of of buys, and it it takes the price from like ninety five sats to like one hundred and forty sats. I'm like, oh, this thing is this order book is crazy thin. So I bought in at like I want to say when Pups World Peace got down to. I want to say under 80 and I just bought some pups just based on that. And now we're sitting at 95 sats. So I'm up a little bit on that. So I did, did nibble at that as well. And there's been some other cooks out there, believe it or not, that, uh, that have happened this past week, despite the, um, you know, the market meltdown. I mean, I've, I know, I, I'm sure you've seen uh Billy cat, um, the, that Arnold, that's sort of like a derivative off of billion dollar cat that that's doing really well. Um, and then also, I, I seen these Uniworld Keys of Destiny. I don't know if you've seen those, but th those are up a few hundred percent this week as well, too. So there's definitely still some opportunity. Um, you know, I've been nibbling. I got a couple of my positions, you know, nuked. Um, so I'm just going to sit on it. I don't need to necessarily add right away. I'm just going to wait and see. Um, and that's just the way the market is. And then you got to be you got to be uh, liquid and to, to you know to kind of handle each of these uh, situations that get thrown at you. Yeah, really nice uh, call out there, Waf, on, you know, looking at the order book and finding what's thin. Definitely think pups are getting to that range where it's it's getting pretty cheap. You know, we talked about some of those price targets last week of where things are a buy. Obviously, it seemed like last time pups at 0.1 were a buy because they got swept up to 0.14 after that. We saw a similar price action with node monkeys play out where node monkeys, you know, they went down and then had jumped back up. Uh, to, I think it was like 0.2 from 0.15. So there's definitely like a, an abundance of opportunities that are, are forming in this market. Um, and it's just a matter of time until we get that bullish sustained action. And then it, it, it should theoretically send lots of stuff. Yeah, I mean, Ardles have been kind of down anyway. So like they didn't really get nuked this past week the way Runes did. So, I mean, like, I think I would, I want to say that Ardles just went down pretty much about at the same percentage as bitcoin did so call it about a 10 to 15 percent uh decrease on ordinals across the board as a kind of fair fairly decent thumb in the wind type of measurement um but runes are down like 30 20 to 40 percent so i think the opportunity still lies in runes more than anywhere else because when you get like those big green candles on bitcoin um you're gonna see the you're gonna see like uh, runes just like pretty much recover their their losses in like a day or two, and then you could take advantage of of the green days. If you're still not a believer in the market yet, you could still play the swings um, and trade the swings at, at least at a minimum. I think, in my opinion. Oh yeah, C completely agree with you there, Wes. So I mean, what 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 else are you looking at this week? Are you looking at? You said you were dollar cost averaging. I did see wizards were down to. Like under like three bucks. Have you added any any wizard this week? Oh yeah, of course, man. Uh, yeah. Wizard the three bucks. I mean, it had to. You know, I, I've been saying it for such a long time. Um, but wizard is just such an interesting play because you have this guy Maven's bot again, who's just been around the market for such a long time. 
from pretty much the advent of Bitcoin, he's advertising on Reddit. He's, you know, being a bit of a bum, just like not giving any updates on this project. Why hasn't it been a burn uh, mechanic done yet? It said he said he was like out traveling the world. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. I think for him, he's probably waiting for better timing. Uh, you know, we can't know exactly what he's up to. But I definitely think from his perspective, he's probably waiting for uh, a, a better moment to to, uh, you know, transfer over and, and sort of unlock the magic Internet money rune. But it's just getting again down to such a low valuation that I can't help but look at it and think like, wow, this is a a generational opportunity because I think magic internet money opens up. It would immediately go to a hundred million, at least in my thought, I could be way off. You know, this could be a blast gold scenario, uh, RIP to blast speculators. Um, but you know, it, it could open up a lot lower. Maybe it's a $20 million market cap or 50 million, but I, I think it's just such a glued in narrative and so locked in that anything below a hundred million to me is, is free. Uh, so at this valuation with wizard being about $3, we're talking about a 66 mil valuation. Um, so I think it's a pretty easy two X on a longer time frame, And I, I really am zooming out here cause I'm super bullish runes in a three to five year time frame. Uh, and I, I really do believe magic internet money goes to a billion at some point. So I'm just kind of dollar cost averaging as much as I can here. I don't want to deploy too quickly because there's a chance wizard goes to a dollar fifty or a dollar, like like we talked about. Anything's possible, but the more it gets discounted, the more I've been buying. So I, I've steadily been scaling into wizard uh, and don't plan on stopping uh, until we, you know, start bouncing. Yeah, I mean that's definitely a smart way to play it. Just like keep buying as the price goes down, and I don't see the rush to like create the rune right now too. So so it's probably like less eyes on it right now as a BRC twenty. So it's a pro you might be getting you know a better deal right now than you know when it finally does convert over and becomes a rune and you, people start seeing it on the on the leaderboard and stuff like that. So I think right now it's sort of like a hidden gem. You know, it's kind of like you know un under the radar. Oh yeah, completely agree. I mean, I, I think it's pretty undervalued already. Uh, but I've been dollar averaging into that. I've been still buying Psycho Hamster. It's definitely a bit weirder of a play for me. I usually don't have this much conviction in like a meme or anything like that. Uh, I just continue to think of it as sort of a milady vibe. Um, so I think a weird community is going to form around Psycho Hamster. I think we're looking for more memes to kind of pop up in the rune space. Um, you know, we saw it with Billion Dollar Cat, which is an exception because that's more of like a just like a cultural movement, I, I put that more akin to Mog than I would, uh, you know, other memes. Like, I, I know Mog is sort of funny, but it's really just them photoshopping the same image and just kind of like, I don't know if you're familiar with the brand Obey at all, but this guy, Shepard Fairey, just put up Andre the Giant's face a billion times. And then suddenly it's like, oh, well, just, you know, art through repetition. We've seen it so many times, it sticks. So Billion Dollar Cat, just you know, plastered the, the billion dollar cat mask over and over and over again. We're seeing the strength of the Billy. Uh, so I wouldn't really call it a meme at this point. I think it's just repetition. But I think with something like Psycho Hamster, it's a weird enough meme that once again, you know, once we get the, the bull coming in, it definitely has some strong potential. And it's seeing some solid volume, honestly. That's a big thing for runes, even though they're down. I'm looking at those micro cap runes, anything that's like sub 5 million that's getting a few Bitcoin a week spent on it, that to me is pretty bullish in the long run. Yeah, I agree with you there because like it's it, it, when it does go up, it's going to go up at like multiples higher than these other uh, runes that have higher market caps. But on billion dollar cat, cat, I have to say this, like for the engagement it receives um, on on social media, I think it's still like woefully undervalued. I mean, I think I think like it's, it's engagement it kind of like out it's outsized versus like pretty much any other uh rune project maybe with the exception of dog right because dog gets a lot of engagement but like the next one up it's got to be billion dollar cap so cat so even at like 30 million dollars i mean like why can't this be a 300 million dollar rune like I, I i i totally see that happening in the future because like the memes are so good um Billy on Soul is like 150 million or so. So like what so this is this really lagging the market, I think. Yeah, and I mean, you're bringing up such a great point with Billy on Soul. We're really just finding ourselves in a position where, you know, Solana just has such an ease of access and there's so much money that's parked in that ecosystem 
that coins can run a lot more easily. Like even in the midst of all the sell off, I know Billy uh, really, you know, has been pumping. And this is time I'm not talking about Billion Dollar Cat, but Billy on Solana. It's just a very cute golden retriever puppy. Who wouldn't buy it, right? Too cute to fail. Um, but we're just seeing how easily on Solana stuff like this continues to take off. And it's 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 interesting how inflated the numbers get, right? Like there's still probably only three to five million dollars liquid. I say only, but that's to sustain a market cap of over a hundred million dollars. So there really are these multiples of liquidity available to what the valuation is. And on runes, we're just not seeing that much uh as you know, comparable. Uh there's there's not really a clear indication of liquidity, at least to my knowledge. And you know, feel free to correct me if, if there is a way, like hey, on Magic Eden, it says the liquidity is right here. Uh, I'm not as familiar as how to track that yet with runes, but I think it's just pretty clear looking at runes. It's a lot less liquid than Solana, right? We're still not at a point where you can just freely place the orders you want. You can't just say, I would like to buy $500 worth of billion dollar cat. So we talked about this theme in previous episodes, but we're, we're still waiting for that technology to advance to a point where people feel more comfortable with these coins uh, as beta plays to Bitcoin. But it's still so early, right? We're still two months out from runes launching maybe three months because uh, time's been flying, but you know it's going to come. So it's just a matter of finding your spot, finding your convictions. And like we talked about, I think the real risk reward play favors runes over ordinals here. But at these prices, I think both of them are getting to pretty firm uh, buy levels. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even trying to compare it to, to Solano coins, but just comparing it to other runes. Like if you look at the 30-day chart on Billion Dollar Cap, it's, the market cap is $30 million. But it has 15 million of volume in the last 30 days. Whereas you look like at a dog, it had it's a at 440 million dollar market cap. It's got 23 million in volume over the last 30 days. Um, billion dollar cap being the second highest volume uh, rune in the last 30 days. Number three is Arsic with a 85 million dollar market cap and five million in volume over the last 30 days. So it just seems to me like billion dollar cat is like incredibly undervalued. And then even if you look at number four, believe it or not, number four is Stupid Silly Cat in volume over the last 30 days with a little bit over 3 million. And its market cap is under a million. So it's its volume is three three x its market cap. I mean, like stuff like that doesn't really make uh, that much sense to me. And then you look at like Pops where the market cap is over 50 million, but then the volume traded is under three. Uh, and that could be just due to you know the the listings being not there like, like we just spoke about and there's people just diamond handing and the only one selling are the one selling i want to say on the lower end to like kind of get out um so i guess take that take that information with what you will with it do with it but i just think billion dollar cap at 30 million market cap and 15 million in volume second highest traded rune like that that one has to take off i think when that one when that one runs, we, we, you know we, we need to be on that train because like we've been talking about billion dollar cat like every single week. Yeah, for sure. And you know, I think I just realized in my head while you were talking about the volume and how it works. Um, I don't think it's similar to a, a shitcoin quite yet. It might evolve to that point, but you know, with these shitcoins, you're forming an LP basically, a liquidity pair between two different tokens, which allows that uh, you know li liquidity to be available. But with that, it sort of sets the price as liquidity dwindles. You're going to see the price tank a lot. Uh, with runes, it's more like an NFT where it's just the willingness of a buyer to accept a certain price. So, you know, theoretically, there could be no liquidity if no one's selling versus if everyone just delisted, the price could go up. And then suddenly you have one sale for three times what the floor is at any given moment. So I, I think with this mechanic, it trades a little bit more like NFTs. Uh, and we've seen in bear periods of NFTs when volume dries up because of prices going down, um, it just kind of stalls out the market. So it, it really does, isn't even a question of liquidity and, and just, you know, are people like storing it and seeing a store of value in pups or whatever else? It's just a matter of what are people willing to sell at? So there's obviously going to be some panic kicking in when you see Bitcoin tanking. And when we see it going from 70K now down to like 55, people are going to be fearful. Um, and sell and say, okay, well, I have all this money that I put into runes. Maybe they're a little less certain on the rune ecosystem right now. But as we've seen with NFTs, right, once a collection pops off, we've had those days where there's big Fidenza sales and then all of art pops or board apes get swept and then the rest of NFTs come up. Like we talked about this last week, right? All it takes is 
Bitcoin going back up, there being a big spike in something like doggo to the moon, bring it back to its all time high, and then everything else is going to do multiples. So I'm personally comfortable with losing 20 to 30% on my position in dollar cost averaging because I know like once we do get those volumes on those top collections, everything else can move 100% a day. And then it's like, boom, you know, who cares if I'm down 30%? Now I'm firmly in the green. And this is not financial advice because again, things do go to zero, can and will. Uh, but I'm, I'm really just trying to buy into projects that I believe in. You're 100% right. I mean, we don't have a swap function, right? So if you wanted to get out of a position, you can just like go on to a Uniswap and just like, you know, put the pair up on the screen, hit, hit swap and be done and be out, right? Like you, it's, it's exactly like selling NFTs and, you know, you have to kind of break these uh, runes down into, um, you know, digestible chunks for the market, right? You can't just put, if you have like a 50 K position in a particular rune, you can't just put it all out there as one, as one, as one NFT, right. Or one ordinal to buy. You have to like break that out, break that down until maybe, you know, a hundred or a thousand different, uh, items, to, uh, line items to sell. And so it makes it more difficult to sell and, and buy and buy and sell. I mean, buying is, I guess is easy, but selling is definitely more difficult. And that's sort of the disadvantage that Bitcoin's at right now until a swap function happens. And it has to be, um, I think it has to be a, you know, an on-chain swap, not necessarily a layer two. And I know there's teams like working on that. I don't know how that's going to look at the end, but once that, once that swap is enabled and we're swapping like directly on, on Bitcoin layer one, I think that's going to be the ultimate game changer. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with you, Af. And, and you know, I do think that there's going to be a bit of a, a shakeup in the midst. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they introduce that functionality and then something like dogs maybe falls in market cap while something like pup moves up. Uh, it's really just interesting when you look at the comps from other coins. And, you know, comps are sort of a useful field guide with uh web three but they can also be sort of dangerous like you don't want to make an unfair comparison across the market i think we just saw that play out with blast where everyone you know compared blast to arbitrum i fell into that same camp i mean you know i definitely was comparing blast to arbitrum in terms of more usage but it doesn't always shake out that way um all that's to say is if trading you know runes was as easy as training solana tokens you would imagine that we would start to see runes go into the hundreds of millions very quickly because we see that all the time on Solana. We see that all the time on ETH. A meme launches and a month later, it's at a 300 million market cap. We don't really see that with runes. We're only seeing that with um, Doggo to the Moon and maybe Bank, which is you know supposed to be this liquidity pair. So it makes sense that that's going up to over 100 mil. But other than that, we don't really have anything even close to that realm. So for the stuff that's above it, maybe it gets a little bit of a haircut. But for everything else below it, it bodes pretty well, right? If you're a top 30 rune right now and your market cap is like sub 2 mil and then suddenly there's just this ease of use and people start speculating on meme coins within Bitcoin, like, come on, right? Like pretty much no buy pressure is going to be required to send those up to 20, 30 million. Yeah, when you look at BTC as just sort of like the dominant coin in the market, right? What's what? I don't, what's his do I don't even know what the dom BTC dominance is right now, but it's probably what? 50% or they're close to it. Um, and now you're talking like altcoins on Bitcoin, whether it winds up being BRC 20s, like the 2.0 or runes, once these swap features are enabled, um, the biggest opportunities will lie in Bitcoin. Cause like these, these coins have so much catching up to do compared to uh, coins on Ethereum or coins on Solana. Um, where, you know, I mean, I think if you take, you take the, uh, Bitcoin's dominance over Solana. I mean, you, there should be these coins should be doing the same multiples, if not more, than Solana meme coins, right? Like you have something like Bonk or Whiff in the billions, or like even like Bank uh, Book of Memes that came out and did a billion in like a few days. Then you, you then the opportunity really lies in runes. At the end of the day, once the swap feature is enabled and it's that easy to trade, um, there's just a lot more money on Bitcoin. So I think like it's just. Um, uh, absolutely massive opportunity we could see you know 1000 x's across the board yeah and you know i'm gonna say it again i know it's talked said it so many episodes but like really gotta zoom out because we're not talking about a random chain that popped up here right like 
trigger warning. We're not talking about Kanto. We're not talking about Say. We're not talking about Soy, right? Like we've we've seen those. We've speculated on those. There's lots of meme coins that can come out on other chains without adoption of those chains. Ultimately, they die. But usually those top coin leaders, they do decently well and then they continue. We're talking about Bitcoin here, right? Like <laughs> we're talking about Bitcoin, the number one market cap of all of crypto. So it's crazy to think that there's not going to be adoption of these coins at some point. Uh, you know, as much as you could say, oh, it's not the tech tech. There's other tech that's going to merge in Bitcoin and replace runes. Like this is kind of the cutting edge right now. It seems like the ecosystem's there for sure. Runes are going to be continued to develop, and the technology is going to change from day to day. But like, this is Bitcoin. It's not going anywhere. The ETF got approval. It's it's starting to be legitimized. So from there, you can start thinking about stuff. Well, okay, what if these companies who own all of this Bitcoin, what if they want to have access to their products or services in a different denomination, or they want to issue their own token? They're going to be looking at runes because it's on Bitcoin, and that's the security. Potentially, they're going to do it on Ethereum once that passes. But still, it's like, we have this asset class now that didn't exist before, and it's just so early on in its place. But there's such a good backstop in terms of just the trust associated with Bitcoin, at least in 2024, I don't think it's going anywhere. So for me, it just makes the Runes thesis such a no-brainer. You know, we shout it from the rooftops. Um, and I'm just not, I'm not sweating it so much, you know? Like if it was a, a random rune where, okay, it came out last week, I wouldn't be going all in it, uh, all in on it. But like with some of these bigger names that we've talked about that we feel really comfortable in, if I need to make this a three-year hold, that's fine. I'm not really going to lose... The, you know, I'm not going to take my eye off the ball on runes here. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, if you think about Solana, right? I'm just looking at I'm looking at Coin Gecko right now. Solana is a 65 million, a 65 billion dollar market cap uh, blockchain. If you think about the value that's on Solana, I mean, I know like a handful of of coins that are already over a billion on Solana. And then you add in NFTs and what have you. I mean, let's just ask the. I'm going to throw a guess out there. Let's just say um, there's. 10 billion dollars worth of other assets that that sit on top of solana which would be about one sixth or like call it like 15 percent more or less on solana that's not solana coins and if you look at bitcoin bitcoin's over a trillion dollar market cap and if you would like add up all the assets that like kind of sit on top of bitcoin whether it's ordinals brc20s runes like it's it's not nowhere close to fifteen percent. It's probably not even one percent. So like the opportunity is huge for sort of like the assets that that sit on top of Bitcoin to go to you know ten fifteen percent of the total value of Bitcoin's market cap. So and so we're like like in the first inning of a game. I mean the game has like the first pitch just got thrown out basically. Um, that's how much opportunity I think there is in like the assets that um, that are around the Bitcoin ecosystem. There we go. Ab. I mean, that's an that, that's a, a great comp there, right? I know I just went on about the danger of comps, but like they're still useful. They're still a good field guide. Like you're totally right, dude. I didn't even realize Solana's only sixty four billion. And like, let's zoom back further, right? Let's go a year ago before Solana got fire. If we're talking like a year ago, Solana's sub sixty dollars. Maybe it's like in the thirties or twenties. And there's really not a whole ecosystem for these meme coins. I'm sure it existed. I personally wasn't trading Solana back then, as I'm sure many of us weren't, right? Like, it just kind of had that bad rap as this is a centralized chain, the network goes off a lot, obviously had all that to God stuff. So people really didn't want anything to do with Solana. Then it caught on. You had more and more people adopting Solana. And there's still probably only, you know, under 100,000 users using Solana on a day-to-day -day basis, if we're being realistic. Um, but once it started popping off, you know, we saw WIF cross that billion dollar threshold, maybe like four to five months into Solana picking up heat and just readily being adopted as probably the third most popular chain besides uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So seeing that ready adoption of it, seeing people actually using it, that, that's kind of what's needed. Now we're going to talk about trading Bitcoin not just like raw Bitcoin, but ordinals and runes, I would wager there's less than 10,000 people in that entire ecosystem. They might have multiple wallets. I, I genuinely think it's going to be sub 10,000, maybe at most 20,000 people who are actually trading runes and ordinals. Um, but it's, it's a low number. So again, just looking at Solana and seeing that it took some time to that adoption, but once 
whiff paved the way it crossed that huge threshold it went up to a billion like that opened up the gates because now everything else has that potential so we're really just waiting for a couple of runes maybe it's going to be billion dollar cat doggo to the moon got very close to that billion but i think we're going to need to wait to see like a genuine rune do it right like i think when looking at doggo to the moon there is just such a large supply because it was airdropped to so many people and a lot of those are probably just sitting in dormant wallets. So I think it's pretty easy for that market cap to get uh, inflated. But when we're looking at like a smaller rune where maybe there's three or 4,000 holders, once we see some of those runes and memes transcend the 100 million mark, it's going to be way easier for everything after. So if Billion Dollar Cat actually breaks 100 million or 300 million or whatever else, it's going to be way easier for other runes to even just hit 50 mil. And again, from there, there's only like five runes that are even above 50 mil right now. So it, like there, there's just such a big opportunity. It, it's really crazy to think about. A billion dollar cat, like the, the number of uh, holders has been increasing, which is also a positive sign. And just to go back to Bitcoin, like I called it a trillion dollar asset. And it's really at the moment, it's 1 trillion, 115 billion market cap. So I basically rounded it. And what I rounded off is like 2x Solana's entire market cap. Basically, this goes to show you how much more money there is in Bitcoin. And and like once that the ease of use gets comes to Bitcoin, you see like there's utility being added to certain runes. Now we talk about the the that the utility narrative narrative is forming um, and the more tools get built. And I think like, you know, people are working on Bitcoin. And now with these, this lull in price action, I think, you know, builders build in, in these times and come you know, end of the year, I think we'll see like the price start creeping up along with these tools, um, you know, rolling out and, and it's going to, it's going to create like a, a perfect storm to like really um, see the, you know, the rise of all these other um, things and, you know, on top of the Bitcoin eco ecosystem. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm still extremely bullish. This, this 15% uh drop that we had in the last seven days or so like doesn't phase me um i just think everything's still in place whether it's uh you know a whole till next year or, or like you said or even like multiple years out i think you know you can't you can't really go wrong um you know just being involved in the bitcoin ecosystem oh yeah man because i mean like you know i think you always have to be evaluating what crypto means and i i think we talked about this before uh, especially when we had lizard capital on you know, the theme I think for 2024 is like, it's accepted that crypto is a casino to some extent. And I, I will say it's a different environment than when NFTs were popping off because the sentiment back then was we are at the ground floor of Google and Amazon, and these are all going to be billion dollar projects. And, you know, we saw how that played out. We had a few companies like Yuga or maybe Proof that were able to create these ecosystems with notable founders. For the most part, it didn't work out, right? Like there was just speculation. They came back down to earth. Most of those projects aren't still creating today. There's still a few NFT ecosystems that still exist to varying degrees of success. Um, but now in 2024, it's more about like vibes, trying to get quick cash, making flips. It's more PVP than ever. Um, so I don't think we can really start saying, hey, this is going to be like the foundation of a huge company. But we can still say that people are going to speculate. Like people will see if Bitcoin reaches all time high as 100K, you know, the average person is not going to be reaching to buy one one hundredth of a Bitcoin for a thousand dollars. I mean, that's crazy that if it reaches 100K, it's going to be 0.01 is a thousand dollars. But they're going to want some exposure to it. So runes offer just that really perfect uh, vehicle of getting risk exposure to Bitcoin, and I'm sure VCs will see that too. Really, if you're talking about the speculation, you know, you don't even need to have that use case anymore. It's more so just, okay, if Bitcoin can reclaim all-time highs, if Bitcoin can get to 100K, there will be traders who enter into the market. They start to focus on runes and ordinals. VCs will see that. They will start buying them in mass. It will accelerate the needle even further. And then we'll wait to new all-time highs to get some dumps, and you'll see some projects die. So we're in a tough position right now because some of that may have already happened, but I don't think it's been at the hands of VC funds. I think it's been people who are extremely or early to ordinals and runes. Most of those people have probably taken some profits. But if you're looking again at like the five month chart, ordinals are still up, right? Puppets five months ago, were still at like 0.03 and they're still at 0.12 today. 
So people are taking profits. There's a lot of people in profits, but now you also have some people who are underwater in the red on their positions. Uh, and while that's bad for those people who bought there, and you know, I'm not saying I'm not one of those people. Like I've definitely <laughs> bought the tops on some of these ordinals, but for people who are in the red, it also indicates that we're now below that mean. So it's a good buy opportunity for the future. So it's, it's really just about zooming out and, and seeing that there is some hope and some silver lining to all of this. Yeah, speaking of like speculating, like if you go to poly market and you go to the crypto section, you see, uh, will Bitcoin hit 100K in 2024? It's a 26% probability still. So that's still pretty high that it could hit 100K um, this year, despite all the bearishness that we've just experienced over the past week. And then going to, going back to what you said, like if, if, if Bitcoin was 100K, you know, and you got $1,000, you know, you're not going to put it in Bitcoin to try and what, what is it going to grow to, right? You, you, that unit bias is real. We've talked about unit bi bias in the past. If you can buy, you know, a couple hundred thousand runes of something, some type of rune for 0.01 and spend the 1K that way rather than buy 1K of Bitcoin, hoping you get that. 10x or that 20x or that 50x or that 100x you're going to take that shot and you're going to put the money into runes over just having 0 0.01 bitcoin i think so you know the unit bias is real um and i think like it's going to become that casino that casey rotemore like mentioned like people want to gamble at the end of the day and there is that culture of gambling in in, in crypto and people are going to take a shot with the low caps and runes right now are like the ultimate low caps 100 percent I mean, at this point, Wap, I think I think we've established the narrative. I know I've just been like pounding the table this episode, but I mean, it's just crazy. Like, I, I didn't expect us to get such a good opportunity. So I really have been deploying. I probably bought like 0.1 to 0.15 worth of Bitcoin uh, or not Bitcoin, sorry, runes over the past couple of uh, days here, as well as Bitcoin. I actually have been just cashing out and buying Bitcoin at the uh, 53K level. I think I bought a decent clip of Bitcoin. Um, I, I just really believe in the Bitcoin narrative. It's one of the few things in crypto that I just don't lose sleep over. So, you know, that, that also is just a great buy at these pre 100K levels. If you just look at the finite supply, you look at inflation and prices climbing, it seems like it's a great buy here. But, you know, I, w what's the floor on Bitcoin, right? Even if the market completely crashes, I think around 20K is a good spot for Bitcoin. So I'm still looking at it as like my max risk is probably 60 ish percent of what I'm putting in. Um, and I do think we get back to all time highs on Bitcoin again, even if it takes a few years. So, you know, looking at my max downside is like 60% bringing us to 20 ish K level. I just feel really good scaling into these projects here from a risk reward perspective. And I think that's one of the big shifts I've had as a trader these past couple of months and maybe years. Like, if you can adopt a large time frame, there's not a lot that's going to hurt you. Like you really have to have something just completely disappear and be irrelevant. And you'll see that happen before it goes to zero, right? Like we've seen it with NFTs. We've seen it with uh, meme coins. You'll, you'll see that shift. I think a great example is like Solana Nub. It was a really popular meme, had a lot of prevalence, had some, some tops and continue to test all time highs. But like at this point right now, I don't think a ton of people are going to be thinking, oh, yeah, nub is the truth. I, I honestly couldn't tell you off the top of my head what the market cap on that is. I'm sure it's not zero. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people bought it and took a loss. But like, there's certain narratives that you can say, OK, you know, I was wrong. I'm going to get out of it. With Bitcoin, I don't think I would ever feel that narrative. Um, it, it's just a knowing and understanding of how crypto is going to influence society. And I think all of us as members of MBHQ share that. So just knowing that Bitcoin's the one that started all, you know, Satoshi's gone as far as we know. It's just set up for us. The infrastructure is there. I, I don't think there's really ever going to be a time when that's invalidated. And I feel like, hey, it's not the truth anymore. So it's really just one of those trades when I look at the risk reward, it's outstanding. Because, you know, I, I really do see a scenario where Bitcoin goes to multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars within five to 10 years. But the scenario where it goes to 20K, it's like very short term for a moment, and then it would rip right back up. Uh, Waf, if you're speaking right now, I can't hear you, but I'm not sure if that is just a me thing. Can you hear me now? Yes, much better. Oh, okay. What I was saying was when, like, the time, when the markets are like this, what I like to do is reflect on my positions and just see like, what I can do better. And one of the things I usually do is like, I like to consolidate into, into my bigger conviction plays. 
And sometimes like when you're, when you're invested in too many things across the board, you can't kind of keep track and um, pay attention to certain, certain investments. So to me, I'm like very comfortable, like in, in like the whole BTC ecosystem that I could kind of keep my eye on and not lose sight of like things I'm invested in. Whereas um, like some of these other blockchains that I've invested in in the past, um, you know, I, I just feel like I, I got in cause it was a hot, it was a hot, you know, trend for a while. And I just like left money there and not really paying attention to the ecosystem. So those are the kind of places I'm just trying to, trying to get out and consolidate back into things that I'm uh, more comfortable with. And then that's sort of like what I'm doing now. And then, as, and then the other thing I, I would say is I'm just going to be constantly looking at the runes charts and seeing w- what makes sense to buy and just, um, you know, DCA some positions uh, set myself up for, you know, for the, for the bull later on this year. I love it. Laugh. I think that's great advice. And, you know, I, I do think something to just a good rule of thumb is it's like, if you really want to buy into something, I would just pick a price and then go lower than that price. Like if you're saying, Hey, I'm going to wait for a 10% pullback, then just wait until there's a 10% pullback and then wait for like another 10% pullback. You don't have to, but it's just for me with buying these runes and knowing that the market is sort of in a bit of a slippy position here. Like the entry that you wait for and then the entry that you could have gotten is crazy. So either wait for it fully or just like allocate enough liquidity where you can dollar cost average. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're planning on buying a thousand dollars worth of billion dollar cat or something, and you're saying, Hey, I'm going to buy this at 30 mil. You could just buy $500 worth at 30 and then buy another 500 at, you know, uh, 25 mil or whatever else. I, I really think just breaking it up, it is a better play in these positions because if you buy it at 30 mil and it goes up to 35, great, you're still making money. Um, and I, I think that's another mentality shift I would have during chat markets is like be comfortable making less money than you could have and not beating yourself up over like, damn, I left money on the table. Like that's that's fine, man. If you're making money in this chop, that's awesome. So I, I would just want to throw that out there as well. Like another mentality shift that I think is really helpful in these times is just not getting overly greedy. Don't like really try to catch the bottom of the knife because sometimes you'll catch it and you'll get a 20% bounce. And then the next day it'll just all wash out, right? Like we saw that with Bitcoin over the weekend going into Saturday, it looked great. Hey, we're going to recapture this move and go full bull again. Uh, And then we just got slaughtered yesterday. So you really just got to like take profit or be comfortable not overexposing yourself in these weird chop times. You know, we have a tendency to like, once you sell out of position, you want, you want it to see it go down. But the re- reality is it's better if it goes up. So that way, if you ladder out, um, as you're cashing out, your position size kind of still is, is going up too, right? So like you, you didn't lose, you really, you just kind of uh, diversified your risk a bit by, you know, cashing out some of, some of the position while it's still rising, right? It's better than cashing out while it's falling in my opinion so like that's another mind shift that's kind of hard for a lot of traders to do and and i would say just don't chase if you're if, if like you said if you want to put a thousand dollars with a billion dollar cat and you want to get it in now because it's going to go up so you want to get the lowest price like no one knows no one knows the markets right and nothing is nothing is like guaranteed it could still go down um so you might as well um you know be a little bit more methodical with your approach whether it want you wind up getting less as a result of it because it does go up just, that's just the way it is it, it's, you gotta be a disciplined trader um and it's just it's just a bet it's just gonna work out over the long term right it's not about like the one the one trade it's gonna be it's it's a, a cumulative effect of how you approach the market um day in and day out yeah really well said wow um so you know we're getting close to the hour mark here i'd say this is as much conviction as they've had in an episode, just really, you know, frothy here on a Monday, excited, pounding the table, great opportunity on runes. Uh, I did want to just, you know, talk a little bit more about the macros. And this is a rare week for me. I unfortunately missed waking Jake because I just got no sleep. People in the content working session today know I had nightmares about chess last night, so I had to sleep in and missed it. Uh, heard it was a great episode as always, but didn't get the macro update on sort of the overall market. So I wanted to talk to you just a little bit about that, WAF, and get sort of your thoughts here as we're in that, you know, 50 to 60K band on Bitcoin, maybe crypto as a whole. We have the election catalyst coming up of November of this year. Um, so just kind of want to get your thoughts of what you're feeling. Uh, you know, 
where sort of your concern, if any, for crypto? And then where do you think we might see a recovery and a reclaim of some of these guys? I, I have like a couple of theses concerning macro, but like my, my main thesis now is now that we've lost this uh, 60K level, until we rec- reclaim it, I think we kind of chop now in this new range um, until Q4, where I think uh, eventually uh, a rate decrease has to come. I just think it's inevitable. Um, I think also when you look at um, like the job numbers, um, they've been like revised downwards like the last three months in a row. And most of the job is being um, created or actually government jobs. So, so pretty much I think it's masking sort of like the underlying weakness in the economy. I know, I know like the stock market is, is flying and, and I think it's sort of like, um, separate than what's going on in the real economy. So, so what I do think is going, going to happen is a, a rate cut's going to eventually come. Um, we probably see the stock market cool while crypto kind of rises up. And then I think crypto kind of takes the lead early going into um, 2025. Um, that's like kind of like my main, my main thesis. I could see a scenario where, you know, things just go bad and go south because of the elections. Um, and we have to wait a little bit longer. But I think for, for the most part, people are kind of bought in on uh, having number go up. And I, whether it's the, the left or the right, um, I just think th- there's going to be a scenario where we do get that rate cut. I do think there's weakness in the, in the market, but I think they will deploy some type of stimulus or some type of easing, whether it's the government or the, the Fed. I, I, I do see, see like some kind of um, you know, help or stimulus coming to prop up the market further. And I think any, any type of uh, monetary debasement is always uh, bullish for crypto. And I think the I don't think the monetary debasement is ever going to stop. So um, I do envision that scenario p- probably playing out. At the end of the day, I think the number one reason why I think rate cuts have to happen, not necessarily only because of sort of like the weakness in the economy, but it's also a lot of the the uh, the deficit of the, the the debt in the deficit is it has to get rolled over um, as as like those treasuries are um, maturing they're maturing at 3% and now they're going to get rolled over at 5%, which increases the interest payments about $300 billion a year for the U.S. government. So I just think like we're going to go broke real fast if we don't bring rates down. So I think eventually um, rates got to come down and I think they got to come down aggressively um, because I think the Fed's usually kind of late and behind the curve. So that when, once they're going to have sort of like a, oh shit moment, we got to cut. And I don't, I don't think it's going to be like just a, 25 basis point cut i think it's going to have to be um like a real big cut and and um that's going to reduce the interest payments that the government's got to pay on the treasuries i think that's also going to just like stimulate um the market like housing because i think housing is still hot um and that's just you know overall just give you give us overall stimulus and if trump becomes president you're talking about tax cuts coming too so there's a lot of things that are very positive for crypto because i think a lot of monetary debasement is coming yeah well said waf and i mean i I think that's been pretty clear over the past you know four to five years at this point i I would really just say post covid honestly like they they have not cooled with the debasement and it's taken a a lot of different vehicles and different forms there so i really like your thesis um and you know something that shaggy's been calling out a lot and i get to follow up with it man we still got to get him on a guest for real just to get this macro reports is I think right now the only concern would be if the stock market does cool off substantially, that crypto would fall further. Um, We're we're back in a a weird position where they've sort of uh, detandem from each other. You know, we used to see crypto in the market would move uh, inversely, then they were moving parallel to one another, and now we're back in a position where, like you said, the market is absolutely ripping. It's reaching all time highs every single day and every single week and crypto is selling off. So it really is not correlating to the market. You would expect that stronger correlation with ETFs being formed uh, and expecting more people to be investing in crypto. Um, But, you know, a lot of it does depend on the structure of those ETFs and who's putting their money in them. So 
the, the fear, though, would be that this money in the ETFs, if there is a major downturn in the market and people are willing to sell, would cause a mass liquidation of crypto and take it down further. But I do agree with you that at some point, as currency gets more and more debased, you would imagine you'd start to see uh, millionaires and billionaires start you know, liquidating their portfolios and putting some of that into crypto, which has a finite fixed amount, at least in the case of Bitcoin. So I do think there's that bull thesis. Um, and even if there is a temporary turn down, you know, post election or whatever the catalyst may be, if the stock market drops 20 percent, is there a chance Bitcoin goes back to 30, 40 K? Uh, absolutely. Um, I, I, like gaps like to fill on the markets, right? Like we, we have an overall higher structure. But honestly, as long as Bitcoin can close over uh, 30 K uh, at, at its low, it, it's still forming a new higher low because like the low from last year, I think was uh, or. It was either 2022 or 2023, but the low was like $16,000 for Bitcoin. And it went off to make a new high. So really, the Bitcoin could fall down quite a bit from here. Um, I, I do think that crypto could get a bit of a haircut. So like, again, as we always talk about with just using discretion as a trader, like you, you don't want to get too perma bullish here because we're still very close to all time highs. Like we could absolutely reclaim 60 and go to 70K in a week. Um, so it, it's not anything where I think it, it pays to jump the gun here. I think you really just want to factor in all of the different perspectives here and, and just have that long-term thesis. Uh, but appreciate the the thesis that you laid out for us, Waf. I definitely think we could see that uh, following suit here in coming months. I mean, if you think about the, the markets too, like the NASDAQ has been greatly outpacing the Dow. And, you know, that's tech stocks. And pretty much, you know, usually crypto kind of follows tech stocks, but in this case, it hasn't. And then you also have sort of like the same investors that are crypto investors that are also investors in like the tech tech companies like the Teslas of the world and the Apples, the Googles and stuff. So you can see like a rotation of people who have made a lot of profits in, in the tech sector, rotate that profit back into the undervalued crypto sector. And then I can see a scenario where even since the Dow has been lagging, you know, like traditional companies, um, you know, that could also outpace and outperform uh, the NASDAQ as well, because I think currently now the NASDAQ is probably up like 15% and the Dow is only up like three, 4%. So like NASDAQ is just like absolutely ripping. Um, so at some point it's got to cool off. Um, and I think like that money could potentially flow into crypto because like, it seems to be like there's a, uh, um, the same pool of invest, not maybe not necessarily the same pool of investors, but there's definitely some overlap between investors in crypto and investors in uh, the tech sector. Yep, sorry about that. Um, oh. Dude, hundred percent. Yeah, I just had uh, an issue coming off mute there. But um, dude, definitely a correlation to the tech sector for sure. And I mean, with tech ripping just so hard, like it, it's really just a matter of time. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of like the my main thesis on it. I guess we'll see how it plays out, um, but. Still bullish, pretty much, you know, all assets for this, for pretty much as, as, as we, you know, the base of currency to see like all assets rising. I think inflation is kind of like here to stay. Um, you know, then the inflation numbers might go down, like the governmental in inflation numbers, but I think we all know inflation um, hasn't really cooled down. It's still, it's still pretty high and it's more reflected in, in asset prices more than anything else. So I think at the end of the day, it's all about, kind of like owning assets. Um, so that's, 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 that's the way how I, I kind of play everything just in, in general. Yeah. Well said, uh, Waf. And I mean, I think a report came out. It was somewhat recently. I actually saw this in the, uh, super stonk subreddit still, still keeping up with the GameStop chronology there, but there was some report that came out over the weekend that, uh, there was a massive lawsuit for like JP Morgan, uh, Chase, Merrill Lynch, just like a few of the big banks. And, you know, they were, basically found guilty of propping up the uh the stock market and, and just artificially inflating it um and i think the market was valued at like a 400 trillion dollar market and they were fined 40 million dollars so just nothing um which is so funny it's like a ten thousandth of a percent but it just shows how much these markets are worth and that the big players are going to keep them up right like they have so much at stake there's definitely gonna be times when they flush it out um, and, you know, not to sound conspiratorial minded or anything like that, but these big banks are just such huge players that if they can get retail frothed up, get them buying at higher prices, dropping the shoe, 
buying back, they can just rinse and repeat the infinite money cycle of taking it from uh, ordinary people that aren't banks. And oh, Jake, I think you got a hot mic there, sir. Oh. You're absolutely right, though, Ross. Like that's the game, right? Um, but, you know, buy low, sell high, right? That's what they do. Absolutely. Do you have any mods in here that can help with the? Uh, I think Jake's got hot mic. Yeah, I think Jake's hot right now. He's. I think he took care of it. Or no, he's not. I'll gladly mute him. <laughs> thanks. thanks yeah, please. <laughs> he's got his own show, bro. Uh, so, you know, when you can flex on it in a minute, it always feels good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> thanks, Jim. Appreciate that, bro. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm with you, App. Like, you know, the, the inflation's there. It's, it's for sure here to stay because, like, you look back, it, it just happens throughout history, right? I mean, think about our grandparents who are saying, oh, yeah, you know, I remember gas when it was a dollar or 50 cents even. It's like it goes higher through the course of history. Some resources will come and go and the price might go down. Um, but for the most part, things get more expensive over time. Hopefully salaries can match the pace of them. But yeah, in these asset markets, especially with crypto being so finite, wow. definitely going to see a bleed in those and prices going up. Um, oh, Jesus, you didn't do a good job muting that. <laughs> uh, I was going to unmute him, but I don't think he's back. Because he messaged in chat. But... I'll unmute again. Yeah. It shows me muted. I'm He'll just unmute himself, I guess. My oh, there is. Up. It's all good. All good. So Ross, I guess, uh, you know what? Salaries never really keep up with inflation. I think if you look at even something simple as like a Big Mac over time, like right? the cost of a Big Mac. Like, I, I remember when I was a kid, they used to make, they used to have deals where like you get two Big Macs for two bucks. And now what's a Big Mac now? Like $10? Like it's crazy. So like, I think inflation is definitely here to stay. Um, you know, salaries can never keep up with inflation. It's just not, it just can't happen. Companies can't pay you know, 10, 15% increases annually to all their employees. Um, so really the, um, you, you, the only way to kind of keep up with it is like things like crypto, because it, even the stock market, if you put your money in a, let's say an S S and P 500 ETF and you get about 10 to 15% a year, you're probably keeping up with inflation. But as your as your income is kind of like declining, when you factor in inflation, you're not able to, um invest as much year over year com comparatively speaking if you're, if your if your salary is like relatively flat and you know your money's being debased that means you know what you're investing year to year is, is is not as much as the previous year so you're actually falling behind because of inflation um so really the asymmetric bet out there is crypto for like pretty much the average person i think that's what that's kind of like probably what attracted most of us that are here to, to you know today yeah, absolutely. I mean, there really is an asymmetric bet. And a lot of it is just the timing, you know, like if you talk about the beginning of this bull run, I can say I firmly did not think it was going to last this long. I thought when Solana started picking up, great, we got two months of this before the shit dies. Um, I mean, the Solana NFT market certainly died, but the meme market's as good as ever. And the bull run's still continuing. I, I think it's really dependent on how you frame bull market and what that means. Um, I think for me, it's just the audience, the activity that we're seeing, the you know opportunities that exist. There's still five X's that are happening in the market, like we saw with Billy Cats over the uh, weekend, um, stuff with Billy on Solana, you know, 20, 30 X, whatever. The opportunity is still there. So I still think we're in this bull market and a lot of it's timing. And to your point of just buying that blood, it's like, here's, here's a gold knob with runes. Like we're down. 40 50 percent so if you recover the 50 percent and you buy now you're up a 2x so you, you can really just have some great opportunities here that will lead to uh oversized returns compared to what you can make in the market um but there's still some great place to be made in the market in general like with with just tech stocks in general ripping so hard with the advent of ai i think you can feel really comfortable investing in some of those things just as a tangent you know i know we're usually talking ordinals and runes um i also just want to throw this one out I know you mentioned there's some opportunities buying Solana. I love the Solana long here. Um, and I mentioned this earlier to G6. Shout out to G6. What up, bro? That's the ordinal homie right there. Um, but I I've just been leveraging, uh, you know, limit order longs on Solana over the past few days. And it's working great. Um, I pretty much just have a ladder down orders all the way down to like 80 bucks on Solana. 
continue to scale into it. But if I'm buying 40 Solana at $133 and it goes up to 143, I'm already making $400. Um, and if it goes lower, then I'm very comfortable buying more. But I've just pretty much been buying Solana anytime it goes below 135 and then sell it when it goes back to 140, which has been happening a lot over the past couple of days because it seems like anytime Bitcoin goes up to 58, K Solana goes up to 140 plus. Anytime Bitcoin goes sub 55k, Solana goes below 135. So there's there's like beta plays just based on the chop that we're seeing on Bitcoin that I think are really great. So you know I, I would really recommend for people who are looking to just get some action here, try to trade the the edges on Solana here with Bitcoin being in this range. It's really not that challenging, and if you're patient with it, you can make. Definitely some good money. That's a great idea, you know, because I usually just buy my Solana off Coinbase, but I'm going to just, you know, fund some USDC into my Phantom wallet and do some DCA into Solana. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, when I was looking, I was looking today at my Blast. I actually sold my Blast uh, airdrop today. I finally uh, capitulated on Blast because I was telling myself I'd rather have this money in Solana. So I'm going to actually put that in Solana too because... I just think the price in Solana is so cheap. Like you, it's like a no brainer. And I just feel like I want to, I want my position in Solana to be pretty much as big as possible, you know, um, for this run, because I just, I'm just one of those coins. I really believe in, you know, Bitcoin aside, I mean, Solana is right there for me. You know, it's, it's the big three, it's Bitcoin, it's, it's Ethereum and Solana for me. I mean, those are the, those are my top three holdings like across the board and they, they will be and continue to be because those are, those are like the firmly established, you know, kind of like blue collar coins at, the, at this at this point in time in the mar in the market. I feel like, and um, yeah, so Solana for me is like a no brainer. Do you completely agree? Um, you know, it's funny you say that, Lafty. You're, you're giving me some ideas here. I do kind of want to capitulate on Blast with you there. Um, <laughs> like, I, I definitely that was one that I've been dollar cost averaging as soon as it went below. Two billion, I was like, I'm gonna buy dollar cost average, continued dollar cost average. Even you know, uh, I think the low that I saw this weekend was a hundred, sorry, one point three bill, and I was like, oh, this is criminally cheap compared to L 2s I do think that blast will recover to some extent, but you're kind of right. Like I, I have so much more conviction in Solana, which has proven itself over blast. Not that blast hasn't proven itself. It's just a question of like I don't know who's actually using it at this point besides the people who are unstaking from season one. I don't know what's going to happen after season two. Maybe they kick the can down. You know, I might hold a little bit longer because I think if Bitcoin comes back, so will blast. But I think you're right. Like just from a risk reward perspective, the risk on Solana's is is not a lot. You know, again talking comparatively to Bitcoin and stuff where I said, I think maybe a 60% drawdown, Let's say maybe we see Solana get back to $80, maybe 60 if the, you know, S&P 500 just melted, like if Nvidia just tanked 30% tomorrow, uh, stuff got completely liquidated, sure, Solana might test its uh, resistance of the year now support of like $60. But I just don't really see that happening. I think you're already seeing the talks of Solana ETFs, not a high likelihood of them passing. But it's on the radar now. It's like going to happen at some point, right? I really don't have any doubt that Solana will have an ETF pass within a couple of years here. So put that on the time frame, man. Yeah, it's an easy, I think, play for a two to three X if you have the right horizon. Yeah, especially if you got things sitting on other blockchains or tokens that you're not like a huge believer of. Like last late last year, I got into like the Cosmos ecosystem because it was it was running. It was pretty hot. But honestly, now I mean I don't even look at it. It's just it's just money just sitting there. I'd rather just like cash that out and put it into Solana or something that, that I have more conviction in. So I'm just kind of doing a little cleanup on my portfolio with things like that. Um, I do think that Solana ETF is definitely going to happen. I, was it Van Eck that that filed for it? I forgot who filed for it exactly, but you know they're not filing with you know thinking they're not going to get it i think i think they know they're going to get it and it's just going to pave the way for other things and you know you could start thinking about the the leverage plays off of it but like the solana play itself is so good you don't need to go all in on like a leverage play like on like a jupiter or the memes i mean those are good plays too but like just you know solana could be like a 10x by itself right so so 
you know, there's something to be said for, um, you know, risk adjusted returns. Right. And I think Solana's risk adjusted return like outweighs um, like putting that into, you know, random meme coins on Solana. Although I think they could do well. It's just, you know, your risk is a lot higher. Yeah. Well said, you know, I, I really do think, I mean, I'm completely with you, Alf. I think Solana it offers a 10x. I mean, all crypto really does at this point, to be honest with you. I, I think the, the opportunity risk rewarded with crypto is still so great, um, especially Ethereum as it starts to dip below 3K. Uh, I, I think 2200 is where I would slam by on Ethereum. Uh, I think sub 50K is where I'm slamming by on Bitcoin. And, you know, sub 120 is where I get really bullish on Solana uh nfa as per usual and you know you've, you've all heard my strategy at this point right i'm never someone who's going to throw all my liquidity in at once i used to i really did when i first started trading crypto i had no risk tolerance i would just go all in all the time at this point it's like great maybe i'll throw a few thousand dollars if it goes down more i will continue to dollar cost average um so yeah don't don't conflate what i'm saying with go all in at these price points but yeah there's such a good risk reward but to your point um, I, I'm really not a buyer of memes on Solana at this point. I think they move too fast. Uh, I think the difference between Solana and Runes is that Solana is just so easy for people to deploy projects. There's also so many scams and rugs that happen over there. And there's not a lot of clear distribution into the devs and the wallets associated with it. Not to say it's much better with Runes. Like there's plenty of projects where there's a lot of dev uh, holdings. I know with RSM, it's like 40% supply went to the deployers. Um, but it, it just feels like on Solana, the, the memes have gotten crazy valued. Um, and, and, you know, this is, again, uncharted territory for our show because we're usually so focused on Bitcoin. Um, but I don't know. Like, in my own personal take, I'm not rushing to buy WIF as much as other people. And feel free to chime in. I'd love to hear from Jinzo if you're around, because I know I saw you talk earlier in the week about like you're really looking to buy WIF. I'm just kind of wondering what your thought or your stance on the market is where you're thinking it's going to go back up to all-time highs. I guess just from my perspective, seeing that it's already broken billions and it's an attention economy for a lot of these coins, I would feel like. I feel like it's more likely that the memes that have come and ran, like Bowdoin and Tremp, great examples as well, I feel less compelled to be like, I'm going to buy the dip on this as opposed to buying the strength on Billy or something newer where, you know, I think people would be FOMOing in. That's the exact same thing I thought with Pepe and it prevented me from buying something that did another 10x. So I don't think like that anymore, really. I try to buy things that already proved that it can break, you know, with pe people's expectations and i also think that it's important to have exposure to the top memes on each chain or whatever if you're gonna go for a meme why not be the top one because every time i try to play those oh i think this is going to be the next one that's when i get burned it never it becomes the next one so i just with it, it depends i have different things that i do but with that account i'm doing only the majors and ma meme coin majors are a thing to me so i'm buying with as much as i can with w when i have some uh some profits lying around or whatever from something else um now do i think it's gonna go back to all-time highs maybe you know what i mean i'm thinking maybe i'll even do a shorter term play on it where if it hits three bucks 350 i'll probably dump some i just think that a dollar 50 is cheap and we were dying for it to get back here and now that it's back here what are we gonna do just be like oh no it's too cheap now i'm not gonna buy it i mean we were waiting for this to happen so it would be like you know what I mean? You can't you can't be thinking one way when it's running to three bucks, four bucks, and then think another way when it came down finally to the position you wanted it to be. You have to just execute and stick to your plan. So I think that's why I'm buying it, is that I think with has staying power. It still has a lot of volume on KuCoin and other platforms. It's on all the major platforms or pretty much all of them. And I think that it's set up for success. Um I have some ability too, but but and I think everything you said about Billy is good. It's just I want to be diverse diversified and i don't want to just be all in on one thing so do i think billy can go much higher yeah sure why not i mean i like the meme i think i've seen it everywhere and i wouldn't mind owning more of it and i think i will add some but it's just for me right now i feel like um like with is just too cheap and it has the opportunity to just run out of nowhere to two or three bucks pepe moves up and it's actually doing pretty well right now bonk moves up mog is moving up and you're telling me with the thing that took everything by storm for months and months is just, just gonna stay at a dollar 50 now i don't buy it so i feel like that's the biggest opportunity right now 150 160 is it's a good buy for me 
Appreciate it, Jinzo. Now, always uh, welcome the other perspective there. And, you know, I love it as traders that we all see opportunity differently. And, you know, just hearing from you, Jinzo, like it does sound like a great opportunity. Um, so, yeah, appreciate that. Um, I think as another good segue here, if there's anyone in the audience, you know, as always, Waf and I love hearing different takes on the show because, um, you know, Waf and I are very lock sync in a lot of the ways that we see the markets. We do have some times where we might be operating on different time frames, but we're all MBHQ members. So if anyone here wants to talk about stuff they've been DCAing into the weekend, even if you took some shorts, if you think completely different, you know, feel free, hit it with it. Uh, would love to get some other perspectives, but appreciate that, Jinzo, a lot. And, you know, anyone else, if you want to come in here, let us know what you've been up to trading wise in the midst of all this chop and downward uh, pressure. Would love to love to hear it. Since no one else is going to go, for me, it's just been shorter term flips for now. Like um, when DOP came out, obviously it tanked like crazy when it hit KuCoin and stuff. Like it opened up like at a, a near a, near a penny. And for me, I just told myself that's super cheap. So let me just, I had sold some of my whiff, bought a lot of DOP, and it ran up like 50 or 60% instantly, sold it all, and everything went right back into whiff into Pepe. So I've just been doing short flips some other places because I don't feel comfortable holding everything right now. And just buying conviction plays because you know but markets are red like this that's what you got to do you got to just buy what you feel comfortable in and what what has proven to you that can run so yeah i mean it's not just about if it's about any coin i think that can really do well like soul i'm adding to soul all the time um but mainly the way i get soul is just by doing flips on on soul shitters and um since we have you know since the markets are a bit quiet and we have free time i've been trying to play shit coins a lot more but like focused on it like i'll play shit coins for like i'll pick a coin a few coins a day and i'll just day trade them really and try not to be in over them in them overnight it's been going pretty well um but yeah there's always opportunity i have not been focusing on bitcoin as much as you guys but that's because i haven't had a, the chance to do everything else i'd be deep into that still you know how much i love my bitcoin so um but for now i'm just holding my bags maybe i should have sold sold off runes a little heavier um but i'm still comfortable comfortable with those bags long term i'm not that worried really i don't care like i i, I don't stress at all about them going down just because i never had the intention of selling this early anyway so it doesn't really bother me whatever price they're at um they're not they were never made for flipping for me so you know i'll sell them on the way up i do that all the time then sometimes i'll rotate some of that bitcoin into other stuff that i think is is good but i'm not really looking to liquidate my runes so when there's pumps, I might sell some, like a fraction of what I have, but never be out completely. And a lot of the times I'll just rotate that. That's it. Like other than that, that's it. I'm just basically selling whatever I can. That's airdrops that I got or whatever I don't feel comfortable on because I feel like the meta changed. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, keep stacking when everything's red and wait for a better moment and then have your, your, the ones that you like to flip too. Like I have multiple bags that do multiple things. I try not to be just on top of one single thing all the time. Appreciate that, Jinzo. Great perspective there. Yeah, I, yo guys. Um, I like the way of thinking about the meme coins in terms of like the longer term ones. Um, like I was like all doing NFTs back in the day, but now I've tried to do more meme coins and I'll, I've been getting burned trying to chase the next one, the next one all the time. Um, and so I've just tried to look at that and kind of in the last month or so, I'm like, okay, what are the meme coins that everyone keeps talking about? They just, they've stand the test of time. You know, they actually, and I'm trying to allocate there, but yeah, it's like, I just, I'm just losing all my money chasing every new narrative while, you know, you'll look at like a Pepe already gone to, to 500 mil and you think it's so late, but then like, that's the one, like, that's the chosen one. Um, it's already established itself with volume and narrative. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm trying to like, yeah, I'm always like trying to pay attention to the ones that people are talking about that, you, you know, you think that will really go the, the long distance, like stuff we can just hold for the whole bull market. Um, so, yeah. Dizzy, appreciate it, man. Great hearing from you. And uh, yeah, always great seeing you in the Ordinal's thread. So appreciate you tuning in for the episode and giving your thoughts. I, I totally agree. You got to go for the winners. My favorite podcast, but it's at, um, it's at 7 a.m. I usually sleep through it. Um, but yeah, love hearing you guys talk about Ordinal's and runes. I, I'm, I'm very big in runes. I, think it's, I just think it's one of those no-brainer narratives. Like you don't have to think about whether or not meme coins on Bitcoin will take off, like it's 
it's uh, you know so i like it love to hear that that's great because i feel the same way obviously if you're listening to the show you know where me and ross uh you know see eye to eye on the runes i just think the opportunity is just so enormous and um it'll be clearer as as the the cycle continues and we'll see people from other chains hopping in board and you know we'll, we'll be sitting here you know with our bags packed already yeah i am um, i've kind of, i feel like i've been a bit shift in runes as well um and this is kind of the direction i think it's going i feel like the first month of runes like the people participating were you know, much more like ordinal, like deep ordinals people or people that had pizza ninjas and nodes. And, you know, it was kind of the more like Bitcoin degen core people. I just feel like the more it grows, it's going to bring, it's obviously going to bring, bring people from other chains. So the way I see this sort of playing out is just like the memes that I thought were good, you know, in the first month, like Satoshi Nakamoto and decentralized and you know i'm thinking i'm thinking like a bitcoiner um and those you know there were some great plays with these more like i don't know kind of like cerebral tokens they're a bit more like technique you know there's there's a bit more like a i don't know like a providence or whatever and i just think people are gonna just it's just gonna turn more into like the memes we're used to um you know like billion dollar cat it's kind of got that bit of a mog vibe with like the glasses on every pfp but it you know it kind of also satisfies the and then you've got like psycho and you get i think you're just gonna have other like silly memes um <laughs> catch up on a lot of the i don't know i feel like they're like boomer memes like some of the so there's just like a, there's almost like boomer memes that i think will just not survive the from the early runes days but yeah, that's just something i think about yeah i totally agree with you there lizzie i mean I think the boomer shit won't really do super well. I think there's just some random like runes that got a little bit. Um, I mean, it's I'd say it's a little bit trickier with runes than others because usually when you see like huge volume, it's pretty indicative of like that's it. Um, you just have to look at volume. I think the perfect example was Leroy Jenkins, where <clears throat> they came up with the rune. Obviously, it's based on the viral Leroy Jenkins meme from like 2005, maybe like early at least 10 years ago um it did really great it was rune 777 i know we talked about it on the show it had a lot of volume at the time so it looked great but they just didn't really have anything to follow it up with right it's just kind of like okay you're making a rune over the existing ip of leroy jenkins but where are you adding to it and where i think the boomer memes kind of cap out is like you need to continue to maintain that attention economy so I think when you have the success of sort of these new school memes, Mog, I think is a great example, is that they continue to keep innovating and pushing and like adapting to current environments uh, and, and saying, okay, the trend is now, you know, this meme, but they'll just apply Mog on top of a new meme. So I think the the runes that can do that well, and I think with Psycho Hamster, we've seen they just continue to have like these weird, obscure memes all in the same style of Psycho Hamster, right? It's just very psychotic and... Yeah, but they jump into every other meme universe very nicely. Totally. So stuff like that, when you can see a rune being able to do that and adapt, that's really bullish for me. Yeah, and even like the low rune numbers, um, while I wish it was that easy, like the you know, they were just getting insane premiums in that first month of runes. And I wouldn't be surprised if all the low rune numbers get flipped by new silly memes in the next few months but we'll see I, I think they'll always hold some value because it's easy to just have like a, oh yep that like i like i even like something like leroy jenkins long term just in case people go back and they're like 777 you know they go for these nice like i also have a bag of rune uh 10,000. but um yeah i just think it's gonna it's just like more People from everywhere are going to come to buy Bitcoin memes. And like the general market doesn't care about this shit. Like they don't care about loan inscription numbers. Like I feel like that worked better for ordinals because they're smaller collections. Um, yeah, it's interesting seeing where it will go. It's just painful having uh, not sold enough up at the top. You know, um, I, I remember being proud of myself because I, I, I remember just like kind of scaling out like, maybe 20% of all my runes, like pretty high up. 
Um, and I usually would have just held everything down, so I'm happy I at least got some off. But yeah, we're just holding till this shit recovers. Um, I, I don't know. There's so much. There's so much negative sentiment, but like, it's just like typical bull market shit, right? Like, if you zoom out, look at the weekly chart. It's just typical bull market shit. It really there's is. Always, yeah, but, there's always so much negative sentiment. You see it even with just the market overall. All the all the I told you so's and the know it alls come out to tell you how they write, you know, and then all of a sudden we go back into the green and everybody just shuts up. And then you know what I mean? It's just you can't you can't listen to all that noise. Just stick to stick to what you what you, you stick to your convictions, stick to what you know and don't get don't buy into all the FUD that comes with market conditions because there's always going to be FUD one way or the other and it, and the, it's there to sway you you just shouldn't be swayed at all like it's another piece of information that, that, you, that you can table and look at but if i stayed on twitter all day i wouldn't be in any market i would be afraid for my life not buying anything but you know what i don't listen to twitter i don't listen to you know what i mean i laugh at them because they think they know everything and they just stay at this they, they, they're scared to enter the market and then they miss all these moves and you know what i mean these people are gonna stay broke i just you know what i mean it takes risk you gotta know how to manage your risk you take your chances and then you, you have to work on your selling too, obviously, because if you never sell, you never make money. But yeah, I mean, fucking the fear is the, always the funniest part to me. I always laugh so much when I see everything that's going on on Twitter. Yeah, like, <clears throat> I feel so grateful to have this group. Like, we, I think we have a more a bullish echo chamber, like, in general, because we've all made a lot of money here. And But in general, in Twitter, it's like you have to be so careful. Like, there are so many people that just don't have a... They don't know who to listen to and they just kind of like take in all the noise but there's a lot of good alpha on twitter i just i think there's like a skill to being able to like sift through it but like massively take people with a grain of salt um and also to like you know have your like list of people that you've built up trust and conviction in over time like i think that's a really important you, you know you got to have your list of twitter follow of people that you know you've been following them and you're like this person's legit <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of noise, but you, you nailed it. That's what it is though. It's just really how to filter the information and use it how you see fit and listen to the right people and ignore the wrong people. Um, I think that's all it is really with Twitter. Uh, <laughs> man, my list what? of blocked or mute people is so long. I have no idea. Yeah. I need to work on my block list, but, um, yeah, <laughs> there's a, definitely a skill to having a good, uh, bullshit detector in crypto because there's no shortage of information there's like endless information people are posting out there but you know very few percent of it is actually going to make you money in the end of the day so being able to have a good bullshit detector read through the lines that's that's uh important something i'm i i can get too bullish on a founder's vision so that's where i've got to check myself <laughs> you know I think we've all been guilty of that. Yeah, and I, it's just crazy how they... But they'll do anything to sell you on, on a position. So, man, they want your money and they want your attention. So they'll go th to great lengths to, to lay it on thick just to get you there. And I think we all start realizing that over time. You know what I mean? And that's kind of why we see these product projects that do airdrops like not last very long it's because people are fed up man they just want that money and they want to get the fuck out they don't want to have to trust anybody anymore i know i don't trust anybody anymore so yeah it's very very hard to find um a collection or a co or a token that you can really trust the founders man most of them, them that we trade that are actually a coin that's that's important right now doesn't have a fucking like they have founders but they don't have a team like you who's the pepe team who's the whiff team it's like everything that's been a community takeover is what's made a success because now you don't need to trust any anybody you don't need to really put your faith in a team that's just gonna mess it up eventually anyway they all end up taking a misstep each and every one so the the amount of time that they actually couldn't have um uh, the the time span where they could actually have success in is never that long because they're always going to end up making a misstep. I think that's what I've realized the most, especially going from last bull run to this one, is that, okay, maybe they'll give you one airdrop. Maybe something else will come around. But eventually, that's going to run out. And eventually, they're going to make a make mistake or someone's going to find dirt on them or something's going to happen. So, bro, I'm done with fucking founders. I don't I don't trust any of them. Yeah, really yeah. great. Oh, go ahead, Dizzy. Nah, that's nothing. No, you, bro. 
Um, I, I don't know, just the like people having good intentions or not. Um, it's really tough. Like there's these people I met in Melbourne recently who met, and they want to build this like uh, crypto learning educational platform. And they seem really genuine, and I really believe they are. But then, kind of, you know, I'm like kind of asking them questions, and I'm getting a bit deeper into their motivations. And you know, kind of came out. There was like this arbitrary, "Oh, we need to start making money soon," kind of. And I'm like, "You guys are not. You guys are just trying to get to the dollar instead of like you think you need the money to make the thing better, but you haven't got anything that's that good." But you know, it's like, I don't know if people, I don't know if it's like bad intentions or people just don't, they don't like, I, do you need to like run a business to have a successful project? Like, do you need to have a strong community? Like, what do people want? Um, I just don't think a lot of them know. Um, I don't necessarily, yeah, it's, I don't know. So I, I meet some people, they seem genuinely like they have the best intentions, but then what are they doing on the back end? How are they directing their time? How are they directing their money? And what's the, is it something that people actually care about? Um, or is it even like, you know, is it, is it at least what they promised in their roadmap or whatever? Yep. All fair points. We're all skeptical now of everything we hear, but no matter what people tell you, it'll always be about money. No one's going to do something without thinking about the money and how much they can make. It's a huge incentive. And even us, like, that's why we do what we do. We want to make money. You think, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to be part of the community and vibe out. That's that's like a, a byproduct of it. That's secondary if you look to do that, sure. But in the end, we're all here to make money. You can't be like, and I know that's what you're saying too. Like, you can't be delusional. People can't think in a delusional manner thinking, oh, they're going to do all this stuff for us, but not want profit on top. Of course they want profit. Everybody's here to make money. We're trying to take advantage of a nascent space that can probably make us all life-changing money so whatever as long as you realize that and as long as the as long as the team comes out with um with um a, uh, a roadmap or a plan that's that's beneficial for all like okay i don't care they make money and i need them i want them to make money because then they'll stay here for longer and they'll actually you know succeed obviously they can't be too greedy but i want to see what's in it for us too like we're bringing them all this attention we're bringing them all our money they can't do things like DOP, where DOP decided to sell tokens all the way up to eight cents and then blame everybody else except for themselves because it, it, it went to shit. I mean, they made the big mistakes and they're sitting there with a the, with this big rant on Twitter about how if you're not happy, sell your tokens. Well, yeah, no fucking kidding. People aren't happy. You guys decided to sell tokens all the way up to eight cents, but you made sure it was set up to fail in a way where if it goes to market, it starts at one or two cents. I mean, that's fucking dumb. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, it really is. I mean, it definitely is all about money at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. Waff hopped off a little bit ago. This has been a great episode, and big shout-out to Jinzo and Dizzy for the uh, community engagement. Always enjoy hearing from our other members on what's going on. Uh, but definitely stay strong out there, everybody. You know, touch grass if you need to. I know we got some spooky drops in the past couple of days, but plenty of opportunities ahead. Um, you know, just keep your head on a swivel. Don't have any biases going into it. Just play what you see. And, uh, yeah, we're all, we're all going to keep becoming better traders together. So appreciate it as always, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and listening and we'll, uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you guys. Take care.